I want to move on to something simple, which is the Raiders firing Josh McDaniels. Basically, and I'm not saying he did this on purpose, but jo- uh, they, they did rather. Josh Jacobs and Devontae Adams got that man fired because they made it very clear. This is over. We're done. We've had enough. It doesn't feel like it takes very much. He's had two head coaching jobs and has been unable to finish two seasons. I don't care what Devontae or Josh did or said or behind closed doors in front of closed doors. That ain't happening in most situations. And the fact that it happened twice to the same guy, that says more about him than it does about anybody else. I don't know him personally, so I want to be hesitant. But like he gives off a... I got this all under control vibe. And I think one thing you have to learn anytime you're moving into a new organization is that there is a culture that exists. And if you are looking to institute a culture, it's not going to work. You need to cultivate a culture, which is why the word is culture. You need to move it slowly from where it is to where you want it to be or where you find it can be successful. And again, I don't have any reason. I don't have any um evidence that Josh McDaniels is this type but it seems it stands the reason if you come from the Patriots organization you show up and you like man I'm gonna do this just like we did it there it worked there it might work here but it's gonna take you a while to get that to work and just bringing in a bunch of guys that you knew that played with you in the past that is not gonna change the culture particularly when the best players on the team you got to sell them. You, they they got to buy into the culture. And it feels like he ain't that guy. He's like, look, this is what we're doing, which could work if you have a like Bill Belichick. You hire him somewhere else and he say we doing things this way. Hell yeah. We all going to get in line. Josh McDaniels. Eh, I'm going to push back. Yeah. Well, you got to start. You got to start winning right away. Right. Because yeah. that means this was. Belichick being a Parcells guy and running things in a very Parcellsian model rubbed a lot of people the wrong way when he first got when he got there in Cleveland and you know signs of trouble they got him out of there it's a little complex but that was part of it he got to New England and even after having won a Super Bowl when he cut lawyer Malloy the world was like hey dog I don't know about this. And then they rattled off one of the best two-year runs in the history of the NFL. And it was like, okay, but this is actually similar to Knight in the sense that the guys who came up under Knight outside of Krzyzewski, Knight can kick it like Knight kicked it. Mm. That don't mean you can kick it like Knight kicked it. And that same thing, Josh, look, the thing that tells me I would have never hired Josh McDaniels is, do you remember that 2010 draft when they did all this getting the pick, moving down, moving up. They just kept doing all these moves and all these changes just to take Tim Tebow. That That is the man who saw Tim Tebow and was like, yeah, I can take him in the first round. Keep it in mind, he's the dude that when he had Cutler in Denver was like, no, I can make anybody an all pro. And he was like, watch me. I'm going to take the worst quarterback you've ever seen and I'm going to make him into an all pro. That was a shame that... um I mean, they had that run with Tebow, which obviously I think you and I have talked about this before, how challenging a time that was (laughs) to be in this industry. Um, But you would think that he would have learned something from the last stint and then gone back to New England and maybe learned something more about himself or about what actually is key to having this success. That's the sad part, but I guess it's good. He won't get another head coaching job because I think he's demonstrated that that's not what he's good at, which is fine. Lots of people, uh, yeah, lots of people are meet their ceiling at one particular portion of the organization. It seems like he it's going to be 20 years of him having a lot of success before anybody else brings it back in. And he's the same guy who told the Colts, the Colts, yeah, but nah. <laughs> that man got yeah, three sure head is. coaching jobs. Sure is. Now, he's about to be something that's really more a college phenomenon than anything else, which is the super highly paid coordinator. I mean, he's going to wind up like O'Brien's oh, going to find somewhere else to go off this New England thing because I think he can get another head coaching job and it wouldn't be the craziest thing in the world. I wouldn't do it, but it wouldn't be the craziest thing in the world. And then Josh going to go back to making two, three million dollars being Bill Belichick's offensive coordinator, and that's probably where he needs to be. But there's something to this that I don't think is being discussed enough, which is the Raiders made Antonio Pierce um, the interim head coach. And I don't know how well you know Antonio Pierce. I don't know him very well. I used to do a few interviews with him when he worked at ESPN. But I do know this. He basically had to leave Arizona State because he was cheating so blatantly and so shamelessly that they was just like, dog, we can't. 
we can't have it like this, which honestly, for those of us of a certain age, means he perfect for the Raiders. Like you talk about cultivate, cultivating a culture, just win, baby, this renegade thing. That's what he about. Like I could halfway see it not working. In his press conference, he mentioned how he grew up on this NWA Raiders hat Compton thing. And that's the first thing that came to my mind. I was like, yeah, this is the Raiders I know. This is Al Davis. Uh, get the fastest guys, the biggest guys, the strongest guys, and sue the league and fight everybody. That is a culture that existed <laughs> it, with the Raiders. Maybe it doesn't carry over from L.A. and from Oakland to to Vegas. Maybe they're trying to be a new, shinier, different thing. But that eye patch is real, man. Like they are one of the few teams that had a distinctive uh, culture and image, and it was cool as shit. Like all black with yes. the silver, and it was like counterculture. Like it was cool enough that the most cutting edge of the cutting edge of art and music was out here like, yeah, I want to associate myself with that. That ain't the Raiders no more. Yo, man, you need heels, right? You can't have all baby faces. You got to have some heels to actually make this pop. And like you wound up with the Patriots who like could have been a heel, except they had red, white, and blue and they called themselves the Patriots and Jim Nance loved them too much and was calling like 11 of their games a year. But you, you know, a villain is kind of helpful to have out here. Like I wouldn't be surprised if the Raiders come out here and just start racking up 15 yard penalties coming out here the next game. I don't know if it's the brightest thing that they could do, but like I'm trying, I'm, I'm down. I'm here to see it. And I want to defend Mark Davis right fast. And I really defend Mark Davis. I've just seen all these people come out here and talk about all these coaches that he's had since he's owned the team and he hadn't shown no patience. And that is not true. That man had found the man that he wanted to coach that team forever. But y'all made him <laughs> let that man go. He, he wanted some consistency. Yeah. He was try He gave a man a 10 year contract. He was trying to ride that thing out. He saw John Gruden's emails and he was like, no. Yep consistency is what I want. <laughs> and y'all were like, nah, it's time for a change. Yeah, Mark Davis did have his guy. His guy was, didn't understand where that emails are forever <laughs> and that he can't act that kind of way in public. 